Welcome back to RC Model Review. Something a little different for you today. I'm going to hopefully try and repair something. Now this is an X8R receiver. Well, this is the empty case because I've already taken it out of the box. It belongs to a club member here, John, and he plugged in one of the FreeSky battery sensors, plugged it into a LiPo, you plug them into the balance port, plugged it in the wrong way around and bad things happened and the receiver stopped because of course the the sensor was connected to the receiver through the smart port and pff, that's it, end of story, no more worky. Uh, so I've taken it out of the little plastic container. I'm going to plug in a battery because of course we've got some LEDs down here which should light up when you plug a battery in. So let's just do that. Let's plug in a battery and nothing. There should be a flashing LED to say no link. Nothing's happening. Um, so yep, she's dead as a doornail. So how are we going to fix this thing? Well, my first thought, my first thought was mm, it's probably the, the voltage regulator may have gone. And if we look here, there's a three terminal voltage regulator. These are pretty common to blow. If anything's going to go right to power, it's going to be this, because this takes the voltage from your servo inputs, drops it down to uh, probably about three, 3.3 volts. I think I hadn't checked on these, but it'd be around about that, the logic level of these microcontrollers, the RF and the microcontrollers. So yeah, I'd expect that to be a three, a low dropout 3.3 volt regulator as it's called, but I have already stuck the meter on this. And one thing that I've noticed, now I plugged the battery and stuck a meter on, all the voltages are battery voltage. Everything on this board measures six volts. There is no, um, there's no zero volts. There's nothing between zero volts and six volts. So what's happening here is that the, the negative lead from the battery, or the negative signal, isn't connected to this board anymore. So somewhere there is, a, and I've metered this, I've put a meter on here because the negative wire, which is actually should go on this pin here, isn't connected to the board in any way, shape or form. So there's a break between the common negative rail here for the servo connections and the board. And I've looked around and looked for anything that's obviously broken or burnt, couldn't find a thing. So what I've had to do is get smart. And I started scraping away some of the solder mask. Now this green stuff here is called solder mask. And that's just, or solder resist. It's just to stop the solder from flowing all over the place and protect the copper from corroding. But you can't always see what's underneath. And I'll show you what I've found when I looked on the other side of the board. I get my macro lens for this one. Okay, now excuse the lighting. This is really kind of dodgy getting this all together here now. When I traced the signal from the pins up here, I found that it came out on this connector here, this piece of solder here, which connects this little daughter board to the main board. This, let me try and get my arm around the right way without blocking all the light, and I can't see what I'm doing here, so she's a bit dodgy. The, yeah, this signal here has the negative from the battery on it, but nothing else on the board has it. So I figured there must be a break between here and somewhere else, and I, I scraped the solder resist off. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tiny little gap there. It looks like it's blowing that tiny piece of circuit board. And of course, with the resist on, it blew it, but I couldn't actually see the gap. I couldn't actually see that it was broken, so I had to peel the resist back to here. And now there is a negative here, but there's no negative there. So what I'm going to do is, obviously it's going to be very difficult to bridge that because it's between these very small surface mount components. I am going to run a wire from here over to, I think it's uh, one of these pins on here, which is also negative. So I'll run a, a fly lead over here and we'll see whether that restores operation. It may not because obviously in doing this, it could have blown anything up on this board. But if we're really lucky, then simply reconnecting the negative, effectively reinstating that little piece of copper that's been blown might restore this receiver to life. Let's see what happens. Right, now what I've done here is I've taken the negative from down here and I've run it around to that pin, which is actually a negative on the board. So we've restored the negative path and I'm going to connect this up now to a five volt supply and we've current limited it so that it's not going to explode and we'll see what happens. Okay, um, nothing, no blinky lights, no lights going down there. If we look over at the bench supply, you can see it's drawing 20 milliamps, which is not very much. So now I need to look a bit further why now that we've got the negative path restored, why isn't it drawing current? Maybe that regulator has blown. Okay, I'm going to go in and have a look at that regulator. It's all a bit hard from these angles. Um, on one, oops, sorry for banging the camera. On one side of the regulator, we should have the full five volts, which will be there. And on the other side, we should have a lower voltage. We've got one volt there. Yeah. So we've only got one volt coming out of that regulator. That to me seems to indicate that the regulator may be toasted. Yep, I think the regulator is toast. So 
find a three volt regulator. I think I might have to check another receiver just to make sure it is three volts because I'm, uh, I'm just winging it on that one. Okay, using my hot air gun, I have removed the little regulator from that board. Unfortunately, I only have um, LM3 triple, no, 117 regulators, which are bigger than the ones that are on there. But so what I'm gonna do is before I go to all the trouble of, of um, finding a replacement, I'm going to solder a wire onto the output of the regulator. I'm going to feed the board with 3.3 volts. So that will basically I'll use my regulator power supply to take the place of that regulator. And then we'll see if it works. And if it works, then I'll replace the voltage regulator. If it still doesn't work, then it's getting to the point where, you know, for, for 40 bucks, you buy a new receiver. But no, we'll see how we get on. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth, turning on the power supply. Woohoo, look at that. We have a blinky red light because this receiver isn't bound. Um, it's working. I'll see if I can bind it to a transmitter. Okay, here we go, entering bind mode. Hear the transmitter bleeping away there. Hold down the bind button. And try and keep this all into shot for you. And turn on the power supply. Ooh, that's looking a bit healthy, isn't it? Okay, let's just turn the receiver off. And take this out of bind mode. Power supply's got a bit of a thing. Let's turn it back on again. Do we have... Yes! So it's bound up. So fixed. Well, once I've replaced the regulator, it's fixed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to search and find an equivalent for that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be easy to find. I could bodge this in, but I'm sure John would rather have the receiver back to its true and proper self. And I'd also have to... Uh, fix up that little ground trace there rather than having this external jumper wire. So there you go. Oh, just That's how we diagnose and fix stuff on the bench. And as I say, this was tricky because that tiny little trace that was vaporized by the flow of current through the telemetry sensor, it really was not obvious. I had to scratch away. I knew there had to be a break. So I had to scratch back that, that uh, surface of the uh, solder mask, solder resist to find where it had broken. I'll see if I can get a much closer picture of that for you because it is really, really tiny. Okay, I'm hoping we're going to be able to see something here. I'll bring a bit more light in, hopefully. It is, if I can find out, I'm trying to get something. It is on that circuit track there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see this. I really have trouble getting the macro lens up close enough, but somewhere just in there where I've scraped the copper off, you might be able to see the little gap that was the open circuit blown away by the by the voltage sensor. I try and pull in a bit, but it usually goes blurry on me. Oh, take that light. It might be a bit without that light. I can't tell looking through the viewfinder if you can see that, but if you can't, you just have to take my word for it that there's a break in the copper there. And that's what caused, that's, that was half the problem. The other half was the blown voltage regulator. So there you go. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I mean, I end up fixing quite a bit of stuff on the bench because, um, you know, stuff breaks and I've got the time and I don't mind doing it. It's actually kind of fun sometimes, challenges the old grey matter. So if you'd like to see more repair videos and, and, and have me talk through what I'm doing as I do it, I'm happy to do so. Makes a bit of a change and gives the channel a point of distinction. I don't see many people doing <laughs> repairs of RC gear anymore, certainly not on YouTube. So... There you go. And in fact, I've probably got so much damn stuff here that's waiting for repair, I could make videos forever. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, thumbs up. Um, if you don't like it, thumbs down. Tell me why so I can lift my game. And if you're a Patreon supporter, thank you because you make these videos possible. If you're not a Patreon supporter, then thank the Patreon supporters because they, and see that? No, no mid-roll ads in my videos. Thank you, Patreon supporters. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.